Guess what we're doing today? I mean, you probably already know because you obviously clicked on today's video, but today we are going to be reading for 24 hours. I attempted this challenge for the very first time about three weeks ago, maybe almost a month ago. It was a lot harder than I initially thought it would be, but I actually ended up reading three books. But this time I decided to switch things up and I will be reading only TikTok famous books. Here they are. Some of you may recognize the cover of the first one because it is a book from Miss Colleen Hoover herself. I'm going to attempt to read four because I read three last time. These all seem to be like about the same size and have about the same number of pages. My goal is four but I'll probably only end up reading three. The first book that I have is Verity by Colleen Hoover and then I have A Good Girl's Guide to Murder and then we have a cute little romantic one. This one is The Love Hypothesis, another book that I've heard great things about. We have another thriller because why not? This one is called Seven Dirty Secrets. I don't think this one went viral on TikTok, but I picked it up during my last Barnes & Noble trip. So if I get through these three books, then I'll start on this one. But honestly, I don't think I'll be able to read all four, if I'm being honest. Also, I barely slept last night because my asthma decided to flare up. So rude. I probably got like one or two hours of sleep in last night. So I probably shouldn't be doing this 24 hour challenge today but i already had it planned and the show was gone so hopefully i don't fall asleep while reading these books i think i can stay up i'll probably end up just having a cup of coffee but i'm really excited it is currently what time is it it's currently 12 54 and i'm going to start this challenge exactly at one let's get to reading i'm so excited i'm literally tucked in bed right now i love it i'm so excited to spend the next 24 hours so I decided to start with this one just because I'm in the mood for a cute, fun story. I'm not in the mood for anything deep right now. So I think this would be a cute little romantic comedy to start this reading challenge with. Here we go. Ah. Hi, buddy. Are you going to read with me? Right off the bat, I like how the author gives you a literal definition of what hypothesis means. <laughs> So I just finished chapter two. I'm going to start chapter three. I'm on page 51. Chapter two was so freaking long. I felt like I was reading chapter two forever. So far, it's not a bad read. The two main characters have met. They've chatted. They've agreed to be a fake couple. This book is actually pretty funny. There's a lot of like little funny jokes in here. I live for a good smart ass response if I'm being honest and this book definitely has a lot of those so far. I've also noticed that at the beginning of every chapter there's actually a hypothesis. The hypothesis kind of foreshadows what's going to happen in the the chapter and for chapter three the hypothesis is a private conversation with adam will become 150 percent more awkward after the word sex is uttered by me i have a feeling that olive is going to bring up sex during her next conversation with adam which will be really really funny <laughs> I'm literally reading this book with a smile on my face like my cheeks hurt from smiling so much i love the two main characters so far adam and olive are so cute together and i'm on chapter five so they're not exactly like in love right now but their banter and the way they interact is so freaking cute i also find it so funny that olive is being like this smart ass with adam because adam is supposed to be this asshole ruthless grad professor and she's literally just throwing everything he dishes out right back to him and not running scared like all of his other grad students and i think that's so cute i love that i love when a girl you know is able to stand on her own and not let anyone intimidate her and olive is doing that with adam and i don't even think she realizes exactly what she's doing and adam is so nice and sweet to her and i just love seeing it honestly it's so cute <laughs> It's so adorable. I can't believe I'm smiling as I read the book. Okay, this lighting is 
adorable. I love Adam. I'm about to start chapter six, and this is the hypothesis for the chapter. When compared with multiple types and models of furniture, Adam Carson's lap will be rated in the top fifth percentile for comfort, coziness, and enjoyment. That means that she's going to sit on his lap. Oh my gosh. <laughs> freaking out over here i'm on page 104 and i'm in my kitchen now because i want to make myself something to eat the second hour just ended i am in love with this book i love adam i kind of wish i was getting adam's perspective in this book i feel like it would be so funny to get in his brain a little bit in his mind and his thoughts just because i feel like he's such a complicated character i mean i really do like olive as well and i think she's starting to fall for adam but she doesn't really know it yet she sat on his lap during a what was it a lecture and she thought that his lap was the comfiest place that she could be and i just think that's so cute i wonder is this book going to get spicy are they going to do the deed like i don't know is this pg-13 <laughs> They just kissed a second time and they still don't realize what they're feeling. They don't realize that they like each other. Kind of reminds me of young love. Like when you get your first boyfriend or girlfriend and you're like scared or nervous to make a move. These two remind me of that. <laughs> change into a hoodie got a little bit more comfortable i read 100 more pages so i'm on page 237 right now <laughs> my cat's meowing i'm still really enjoying it it's still funny although something bad just happened and i know that it's probably just going to go downhill from here i think it's so cute how the two main characters clearly love each other but don't know how to tell one another how they feel. It's endearing, but it's also kind of like dumb because they're adults and they should be able to say what they feel. So it's a little annoying as a reader being like, just tell him already that you love him or just tell her that you love her. And I also feel really bad for the main character, Olive, because she is super insecure. She doesn't see her potential as a woman or as a scientist. And that just makes me sad. She second guesses herself all the time. And I'm hoping that by the time the book is over that she's a lot more confident in herself as both a scientist and a woman this right here is the same argument that i have with my husband literally all the time i love the movie fast five well now my favorite fast and the furious movie is furious seven before that one came out it used to be fast five and i hate Tokyo drift but for some reason my husband loves that movie and i'm like why it's the worst of the franchise that's funny that olive and adam are arguing about that too if you are a fast and the furious fan let me know your favorite movie from the franchise in the comments below please don't tell me it's tokyo drift though things got spicy in this book and i just know something bad is going to happen because something bad always happens i need to take off my makeup why am i so oily shit is going down in this book oh my god it just got so intense oh my gosh i've been reading for almost six hours now I just finished the love hypothesis and I think that I love it. I don't think I love it. I know that I love it. I am getting delusional. The not sleeping is catching up to me. But I love this book. I think it's going to be one of my new faves. I'm tempted to give it five stars, but honestly, I was a little annoyed with Olive. Not just Olive, annoyed with Adam too on how they were two grown ass adults and they couldn't just tell each other how they were feeling like i don't know i just believe that if you're honest about how you feel or the people that you love i feel like you just avoid so many unnecessary drama and problems and i was getting annoyed at the fact that they kept hurting each other because they were both afraid that the other person didn't love them when in fact they were both in love with each other still it was a really cute little book and i highly recommend for you guys to check it out if you haven't read the love hypothesis it's one of those books that i feel that i will grab when i'm 
in a sad mood or I just need like a good laugh because it's funny and romantic which I love I'll give it like a four and a half out of five stars not a complete five star because I was getting a little annoyed <laughs> with the main characters but I still really really like it and I'm glad I purchased the physical version and not the Kindle version now I don't know what to start next should I read Verity or A Good Girl's Guide to Murder? Um, I think I'm going to start Verity. Honestly, I don't know how far I'm going to get tonight because I am feeling tired. Um, but I'm going to try to stay up. It took me almost six hours to finish this book. And this book had 351 pages if you don't count the author's note and then the preview of the author's next book. Verity has 314 pages, so it's shorter. So it'll probably take me another five hours to finish this. First things first, I need to take off my makeup. Just took off my makeup. I'm going to get cozy in bed to read Verity. I'm honestly still smiling about this book, and I feel like an idiot. <laughs> like, why am I smiling? It's just such a cute little love story. Time to read. Parody. I like that the dedication's in cursive. Chapter one. Oh my god, the first sentence. I hear the crack of his skull before the spattering of blood reaches me. Whoa. What a way to start a book. Please don't break my heart, Verity. Wow. Chapter one started with a bang. 33 pages in and I feel so bad for Jeremy. I just want to give him a hug. I'm 100 pages in to Verity, well actually 115 pages in to be exact, and I am hooked. I literally don't even want to take breaks to update this vlog because I don't want to stop reading. I'm at the part of the book where Lauren, Lauren, am I pronouncing that correctly? Lowen? Lauren? Lauren is reading Verity's autobiography and wow, Verity is deeply fucked up in the head. Some of the things she wrote in her autobiography are so intense. It just doesn't make her seem like a good person at all. I don't know what's going to happen, but this book is really, really good. One thing I appreciate about Colleen Hoover, I mean, this is only the second book I read from her, but the one thing that I really appreciate from her writing is that she gets straight to the point. I love that. I love when authors get straight to the point and have me hooked from the very beginning. Books that start off slow are not my jam, if I'm being honest. So I really like that Colleen Hoover just gets you hooked from the very beginning literally from the first sentence of her book you're already hooked and i'm just really enjoying this book i'm tired as all hell you can probably tell from my eyes but i'm really enjoying this book i'm almost done with the book i'm on page 246 i don't want to be done with the book because it's actually really really good but i'm also very very tired i'm actually in my office right now because my husband is sleeping and i don't want to wake him up it's getting late and my cat's in here with me Owen and jeremy got together and the book got spicy and i still think that verity is a very disturbed woman which i'm interested to see how this book ends and what happens to verity does Lowen tell jeremy like what his wife who his wife actually was or is because she's still alive or does she spare him the heartache and not tell him i'm conflicted i want it to end because i'm tired but at the same time i don't want it to end because it's so good lauren asks jeremy what do you want and jeremy goes you i want you low i love how he has a little nickname for her and they basically just met maybe like a month ago i just finished this book and i am so confused i'm shocked wow what a good book the ending it was such a good book and my camera is about to die i need to charge my camera before i go to bed so i can film first thing in the morning but let me make this fast this book is so freaking good i love it i love it more than it ends with us i think because 
it's a thriller and I love thrillers and then mix that in with a romance and I'm all in so really really love this love the characters Lauren and Jeremy I despise Verity I'm so so confused at the huge twist at the end so if you read this book I think we need to chat because I'm so confused I don't know who to believe what to believe but it was such a good book highly highly recommend honestly I think I give it a five out of five I love it only the second Colleen Hoover book that I read but it's my fave and it definitely makes me want to read more of her books I definitely will I'm literally on the floor with my cat and <laughs> trying to digest what I just read oh that was such a good book but now it's time for bed <laughs> so I'm gonna call it a night I don't even know what time it is because I don't have my phone on me but I know it's late so I'm gonna charge this camera and go to bed and then I'll see you guys in the morning to continue this 24 hour reading vlog go read Verity so so good good morning you guys just woke up it's currently 7 a.m got my coffee ready and i'm going to be starting a good girl's guide to murder I look like a hot mess but it's too early for me to put any makeup on <clears throat> my voice i will be done with this challenge at 6 p.m today so i'm going to read until 6 if i don't take any breaks then i'll be done at 6 and i think i'll be able to squeeze in that fourth book which i'm really excited about because i don't think it's going to take me all day to read this one book i mean i might be able to start the fourth one and not finish it depending on how much of an easy read it is we shall see it's also a very cloudy day so it's perfect to chill and read i don't know why but whenever i read all day and it's actually sunny i feel like i'm doing a disservice to my life because i feel so lazy but whenever it's rainy or cloudy and i read i feel perfectly fine guilt-free <laughs> to just sit in bed and read I just read the first 50 pages of this book. So far, part one just seems to be Pip doing a bunch of interviews around her town to really understand like what happened with Sal, the guy who's being accused of murdering Andy. The main character, Pip, seems to be 100% sure that Sal didn't murder Andy and her body has never been found. So she decided to choose this investigation as her final senior year project. She doesn't really have any expectations to solve the murder to find out who actually killed Andy or to find out like how she disappeared. But she is determined to prove that Sal did not murder his girlfriend and that he was innocent. The book itself, it's in a investigative format and I really, really enjoy that. I love true crime. So this book kind of reads like a true crime novel or like a documentary and I really, really have been enjoying it so far. So I'm really excited to see what Pip discovers and I'm curious to see if she actually finds out who murdered Andy going to continue reading for a little bit and then i'm probably going to have some breakfast soon but let's continue reading for now all right so i just finished part one of the book and it's definitely picking up now i feel like someone is trying to warn hip to not look any further into the murder investigation which means that part two is going to pick up a lot more now and i'm excited i read 100 pages and the first 100 pages again were all really about interviews and learning about like what version of events did everyone have of that day or at that of that weekend really that was fun now i'm about to start part two before i read part two i think i'm going to get ready because i don't want to stay in a robe all day and i want to put a little makeup on so i don't look like this i just finished getting ready going to continue reading not gonna lie i'm kind of tired my eyes keep watering because they just want to be closed instead of reading and it's getting harder to focus on the book now that the book is boring or anything i'm just tired Pip is finding out a lot of information regarding basically everyone that was involved in Andy's life before she disappeared. It seems like everyone is hiding a secret and things aren't 
what they seem it seems like she's getting closer to the truth i'm like halfway done with the book a little bit more than halfway done with the book but i am starting to see myself slowing down and rereading things because my brain feels so cloudy right now i'm just getting so tired but that's just my fault that's not the book's fault at all i'm laughing because the main character pip is writing her college application essay and she doesn't know what the heck to write about and i remember struggling with that too and second guessing myself and making sure that my essay was perfect and the common app i remember all of that it just brings back so many memories and it literally when you're writing your essay and you're applying for colleges it literally feels like it's the most important thing in the world and in some aspect it is important but i just think back of how nervous and anxious i was during that time and i'm like why was I so nervous? <laughs> it is a nerve-wracking experience because everyone around me is telling you how important it is to apply to colleges and to get into a good college and all that. But yeah, it just makes me laugh that I was so anxious during that time and now I can look at that time and laugh and be like, what was I so nervous about? Pip is basically going through that too. Well, she's not nervous about the application or the essay. She's just like confused as to what she should write about. And I don't blame her because some of those questions on those college essays are so deep and it's like, relax, I'm 18 or in my case, I was 17. It feels like a lifetime ago. Just got to part three. I have a little over a hundred pages left and shit just got real, you guys. I don't know how much to say about this book because I don't want to spoil it for anyone who hasn't read it. It's a really good book. Things just got super intense. I will say that Pip just found out something so huge that will definitely change the course of her capstone project. And I'm assuming part three is the final part of this book and it's going to deal with what she just found out and things are going to get real i think i'm hitting the climax part of the book so i'm really excited to see where this book goes and i still have a couple more hours left in my 24 hour challenge so i think i'll be able to finish the next hundred and so pages within the next hour and a half if i don't take any breaks and actually be able to start on my fourth book i'm so proud of myself because last time i feel like i was only able to read three books i don't know if i'll be able to finish this one though because again i've been reading kind of slow guys something bad just happened it's so sad all right wow just finished this it took me about seven hours give or take some time that i took to eat and get ready for the day but it was actually a really really good read i have a lot of thoughts on it some of the things were a little bit predictable i don't want to say what because i don't want to spoil this book in case you haven't read it i think i give it like a three and a half out of five stars maybe a four out of five i definitely want to check out the sequel though because the sequel i think it's out already good girl bad blood i'm interested to see what that one is about i don't know i'm conflicted i don't know whether or not to give it a three and a half or a four out of five stars because i really did enjoy reading it it did get really suspenseful um like i said there was a couple things that i predicted it was a letdown when i was right i was like oh i was kind of hoping i wasn't right about that but i was definitely a good book good characters i really love pip pip is such a great character like she doesn't take any shit from anyone i like that she follows her instinct and doesn't really let anyone get in her way to figure out if she's right or not or to bring justice i also really enjoy ravi i think he was a good character to pair up with pip there's makeup all over this book because i keep touching my face like an idiot and then touching the book i definitely think that there should be a movie based on this book or even like a TV show. I could see this being a Netflix series as well. Especially since there's a sequel, like why not? You know? Netflix, get on it. I have about five hours left in this 24 hour reading challenge. 
So I'm going to start the next book. I don't think I'll be able to finish it. It's very gloomy and cloudy today. So I kind of just want to lay in bed and take a nap. But I'm also committed to finishing this challenge. So I'm going to read for as long as I can for the next five hours. This is the next read. Seven Dirty Secrets by Natalie Richards. It's about 313 pages. Um, I might be able to finish this within the next five hours. I'm not sure yet. Uh, depending how slow of a reader I am because I'm tired but if I don't finish it at least I was able to start on a fourth book on like last time so let's get started you guys it's pretty clear to me that everyone in this friend group is hiding a secret and I'm curious to know what that secret is are they all hiding the same secret or are they all trying to protect themselves from something I don't know I'm definitely getting tired. I'm on chapter 12, page 118 of this book. It seems like the person that is behind the scavenger hunt knows what the friends are hiding. It seems to be very personal. Like that person wants to make the friend group pay. Well, not the friend group pay, make the main character Cleo pay. But I find myself rereading the same paragraph, even though it's not even that late in the day. And my brain feels mushy from reading so much i think i'll get pretty close to finishing it before my 24 hour mark but i don't think i'll be able to finish this whole book it is now the 24 hour mark i am exhausted i got about halfway in the book i started to read really really slow even now i, I feel like i can't think clearly because my brain feels all mushy but so far i'm really enjoying it i have a theory on who's behind the scavenger hunt Part of me kind of wants to continue reading for the rest of the night because it's still pretty early. But another part of me just wants to put this book away and not read for the next week because my brain feels all mushy. But knowing me, I'll probably just read this tomorrow or even continue reading it later tonight before I fall asleep. But yeah, if you guys want to find out my final thoughts on this book, make sure to watch my book recap for the month of March, which will be out maybe in like two weeks at the end of March, beginning of April, to see what rating I give this book. That's pretty much it for this 24-hour reading vlog. I think it was a pretty successful reading vlog. TikTok definitely has a good taste in Books. Every book that I read during this 24 hour reading vlog was really good and I definitely recommend them. They definitely live up to the TikTok hype. <laughs> so definitely make sure to check them out. Before I go, if you guys have any recommendations on books that I should read, make sure to leave them in the comments below and I'll pick them up during my next Barnes & Noble trip. Maybe I'll do another 24 hour reading vlog soon. But yeah, leave any recommendations you may have in the comments below so I can check them out. But yeah, that's pretty much it for this 24 hour reading vlog. I really hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe it helps me out a lot and i would love to have you a part of my little channel here on youtube and i'll see you guys in the next one bye guys mm -hmm.